Private Lender Podcast, Episode 109. The Private Lender Podcast quote of the day comes to us from Dale Carnegie, who said, Develop success from failures. Discouragement and failure are two of the surest stepping stones to success. This is the Private Lender Podcast, the show that shares practical advice and know-how for new and seasoned lenders, from private mortgages on single-family houses to joint ventures on commercial projects and beyond. Discover details about investment vehicles that you won't find at your local bank or online broker. Listen and learn from private lenders and real estate investors, as well as from professionals and entrepreneurs, as they share the details, strategies, and the insight that allows for successful and prosperous lending. Now, get ready to increase your ROI. Here's your host, Keith Baker. Hello, Private Lender Nation, and greetings from the energy and COVID capital of the world. Just kidding. Houston, Texas. Welcome to episode 109 of the Private Lender Podcast. I'm your host, Keith Baker, and I want to thank you for subscribing and listening. But more importantly, I want to thank you for sharing your time with me today. If you're looking for practical tips and advice on private lending and how to build and maintain wealth without banks or Wall Street, then you're in the right place. But if you want to learn more than that, if you want to learn from my mistakes so that you can avoid them, well, then pull yourself up a chair, pour yourself a really stiff drink uh, because this podcast is for you, my friend. Like, I'm, I'm excited to get straight into the topic of today's episode, uh, topics, I should say, because there's, um, well, it's just really only one topic and then in the, kind of an announcement, I guess, is the way it, it really should be played out. But nonetheless, both things I want to tell you about today have roots in uh, the old world, let's face it. And it's... um. The first one is a topic of one of my greatest passions, the study of philosophy, the Western world. Uh, anyway, um, in this case, during the golden age of philosophy in Athens, which uh, began just shortly after Aristotle and ended with the beginning of Neoplatonism. This is known as the Hellenistic period of philosophy, in case you're wondering. But more specifically, I want to speak to you regarding our dear friend Zeno of Sidium who was credited with founding the um, Hellenistic school of philosophy known as Stoicism. Now, um, before you say, well, my dad was a Stoic, yeah, mine too, but uh, not in the philosophical sense, more of the emotional sense or in the perhaps behavioral sense more, uh, since it's more of an uh, not showing external emotion or whatever. But I'm not going to bore you with all the details. You, you can go over to the show notes page for links, more information, and all the minutiae a philosophy that makes this life worth living for um, your humble host and humble host, humble host and narrator. So, anyhow, let's um, let's carry on. Nonetheless, the Stoics created an exercise called premeditatio malorum, or the premeditation of evils. And you might ask, what does this really mean? Well, luckily for both of us, there's a gentleman named Tim Ferriss who's much spar- smarter than myself, and has given a spectacular TED talk about the exercise of the premeditation of evils, or Tim likes to call it fear setting. Rather than goal setting, it's, it's fear setting. And I would play you the full audio of Tim's TED Talk. However, I recently had my hand slapped by YouTube uh, or I, and iTunes for using, and I admit it, I used copywritten, copyrighted material, music specifically, and recently it was in, look, I mean, it was John Coltrane's song, Alabama, which, you know, rules is rules. I understand that. But in light of everything that's gone on in this country and you're going to censor Coltrane's Alabama, you might as well just censor all emotion. But anyway, getting down a, getting down a path I don't need to go down. So anyway, in order to keep this podcast above board, I respectfully request you, dear listener, go to the show notes page and clink clink <laughs> click on the link to the video or you know if, if you're driving or whatever and you just need you have 15 minutes just do a quick google search for tim ferris fear setting ted talk and it'll be the first thing that, that that comes up or go to the show notes page and you can download a worksheet that will help you through when, when tim walks through the exercise and then through his talk and you can print it out and use it as a template for your own fear setting exercises and to summarize what you're going to listen to, and I wish I could do it here and I didn't do a better job, but you're going to take an activity that you're considering, right? So it could be anything. It could be asking for a promotion. It could be ending a relationship. It could be maybe, you know, telling your partner or significant other that you're not happy. Or maybe it's, uh, you know, maybe it's time to buy that Corvette, gentlemen. I mean, sometimes it's all we have. Let's face it. But nonetheless, 
I'll, I'll share with with you recently. Uh, I've been him and Han and talk, I'm going to create the Private Lender Academy. I'm going to have a course and I'm going to teach people blah blah blah. But I, I haven't been doing it. I haven't been putting it together. I've been baby steps at at best. Uh, I, I think um, you know elephants have a shorter gestation period than than what I do for for my projects. It, it, it seems so. <laughs> Nonetheless, uh, I did some fear setting and realized that I'm really, really going to regret it if I don't at least put an effort and put something, even if what I put out is a piece of crap. I've got to, I've got to do it. I've come this far. I've got to do it. And what if I do it? What's the worst thing that can happen? What if I fail? What if I have a partial success? And what does my life look like emotionally, physically, spiritually, financially? What does what does it what does it look like? And and for me, it's it's really more making a concerted effort to be have integrity to myself. It's it starts with other people. I, I agree, you got to have integrity to others, but you, ought, you you need it to yourself more than anyone else. So, anyhow, show notes page, fear setting, run through it. Watch, watch the TED talk from from Ferris. It's ten, it's fifteen, thirteen or fifteen. It's nothing. It just just go do it and and, and give it a shot. That's all I ask of you. So, uh, and now I'm going to lubricate the vocal cords because the other topic I wanted to discuss with you today is, is quite simply, it's quite simply regarding the basics of building and maintaining, in this case, wealth. Uh, I'm only going to speak to you about money. I'm not going to speak to you about your spirituality or your faith, for example. Uh, and I, I, I can give opinions, but I can't help. I really don't have any practical experience. Uh, that's what clergymen are for. That's what uh, you know. People like the my good pastor, and that's what that, that's what that's what they're for. But with the finances, I can help you with. But it, it goes beyond finances, right? Just wealth, finances, it, spirituality, health, and and I don't know where else to put it, but mental health and and your positive, you know, your outlook on life and, and where you are. Those are those are very very key. So I. I consume a lot of content about this, so I, sp- I spill it to you. But as far as the practicality is concerned, I'm going to have to stick to the, uh, the conservative money side of this. So the, really the pinnacle of maintaining wealth and, the, and, and what private lending is all about comes down to what I like to call subtle discipline. And subtle, in within, within those two words, subtle discipline, I think consistency should, is just a given in there. And I haven't been very consistent as of late. And I'm giving you a pledge, uh, my dear reader, my dear reader, <laughs> my dear listener. I don't know. Maybe you are reading this, but I'm going to pull my head out of my ass and provide you with one episode per week, just like I did before I let life get in the way and before all this COVID bullshit started. And I want you to pause it right there. Did you hear that? Did you just hear what I said? Did you just hear me make an excuse for not taking care of my own shit? Did you just hear me give an excuse as if it's somebody else's fault or something else's fault that I'm going through a divorce or I, I took on too much debt, personal debt, or I made some bad investment decisions or business decisions as if it were the fault of something outside myself that made me binge on Netflix for a month uh, rather than create the business I said I wanted to create. And by the way, um, the league justified curb your enthusiasm and I just got hooked on Peaky Blinders. So forgive me. I am human. I do need machines to fly. Anyway, but it's it's not as if it's someone else's fault that I don't have I didn't have enough money and savings to weather this COVID storm when it hit. Right? I had to go into some debt just to be on the safe side. Didn't know the uh well she's when she got laid off, she was legally still Mrs. Baker, so had to take care of her. So where does this leave me without going into the whole Dave Ramsey thing, which I love Dave Ramsey's techniques for getting people out of debt and getting their head out of their ass. Uh, his investments are even more, too conservative for me, but nonetheless, smart guy. He talks about what he knows. So what, what do I know? Well, step one is I got a problem with X in the execution department. I fully admit that to you, Linder Nation and Facebook and the world. Step number two is to come to an accept. And this is the, the, t- the tricky one is to believe is to believe that I and I alone am the only person capable of taking me where I want to go. I cannot re rely on others. I can't rely on my state government, my local government, my federal government. I can't rely on another human being to take me where I want to go. 
I've got to define where I want to go and take the actions to get me there. And step number three is to make a decision to become a steward of, of money, but not just, or, like, scratch that. I want to become a steward, period. The things that I want to become a steward of are over are money, love, opportunity, and wisdom. So that's sort of a goal I've said. I've ta- ta- told you about fear setting earlier, but now I'm talking about goal setting. But it's more, it's make a decision to act like the steward, to do the things that makes one a steward, not just say that I'm going to be a steward and go blow money. Or go be frivolous with love or opportunity. Or worse, uh, be frivolous with wisdom. So what does that mean for you, my dear listener? Well, I'll tell you what it means. I'm going to announce something for you. A new segment on this show, if you will. Uh, From time to time, I've done some part ones, part twos, this and that. But I've decided that now for every, every month from here on out, starting in August of 2020, in the year of our Lord, 2020, uh, I will dedicate one episode or at least a part of an episode every month to lessons that are found in the book called The Richest Man in Babylon. And I'm doing this so that we can go through something together step by step on a, a certain pace and ensure that we have a solid uh, financial understanding of you know of money and, and a good foundation, but also hopefully to help us understand ourselves a little better. And there's a little quote that I don't, I don't know who said it first, but I, I've heard it in, in churches and temples and in, in, in other places and in, in, in boardrooms. But the quote is simply this methods are many and principles are few methods often change, but principles never do. And so that's why I'm going to run through the richest man of Babylon because so much of it is found in, in my foundation of, of finances of private lending. And the first mastermind I ever went to, it was they gave it to us. And, you know, it's a five dollar book, big deal. But what's inside is uh, just it's good old. Uh, you know, consider the sort of like the Ten Commandments if you're a Christian, right? Or um, you know the the, the scrolls. Um, just just good good old fashioned uh, advice. And I mean, if the last four months have taught us anything. It's that everyone needs to have at least six months of expenses saved and liquid to weather storms like this COVID crap. And that's the principle. That's not specifically in the book, but that is simply a principle that is taught. And one that I will walk through the richest man in Babylon with you. Hopefully you'll stick around long enough and listen so we can get through those things together and make sure our foundations are in check. I mean, everyone and their brother knows that you're supposed to have six months or some, you know, some type of war chest, uh, uh, emergency fund, if you will. So if you or if I fail to recognize that what the world is telling us right now in this moment from March until August of 2020, what's right in front of our nose. If, it, if we can't read and say, look, we need to, we need to figure out how we're going to do that. How, how many Starbucks do we need to cut out? Do I need the Kobe beef? You know, do I need the the expensive booze, or do I need you know, do I need the do I need to have that <laughs> that cabin over on the water on the cruise? What I'm trying to say is, the world is telling us right now, and I'm telling this to me just as I'm telling it to you because I need to listen to my own advice and follow my own shit as well. But the world is telling us right now, slapping us in the face. We need to have six months saved. Six months of expenses saved and liquid, ready to go. And if we don't, the next time this happens, then shame on us for not recognizing it and doing something about it and being ready for the next time bad things occur. Because they will. Trust me, they will. What goes up comes down. Everything is in cycles, right? Go listen to the birds. Go read... uh, Now you can really tell them a Sunday school dropout. Not Proverbs. For everything, there's a season. There's a bird song about it. That is sad. That is sad. I can tell you that a bunch of potheads and drug takers from California named the birds, great musicians though, sang a song that was based on the Bible, but I can't tell you the book in the Bible. Wow. Well, I guess we can all agree who needs Jesus here. <laughs> anyway. All right, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap it up, and I'm going to leave you with that little teaser about uh, the lessons from the richest man in Babylon and 
I'm going to try to wrap this up for episode 109. And you can find the links to the fear setting worksheet and the, the Tim Ferriss TED talk on the on the show notes, episode 109. And I can't I can't recommend to you enough. I can't suggest to you uh, enough to watch and incorporate the exercise and and learn and learn learn a little bit about what a stoa is and what the Stoics were about. I, I think you'll be. I mean, it won't. It might not shatter your world or change your life, but you might find it interesting. So. I will leave you to that, dear listener. And now I'm grabbing the mic and I'm getting real close and I'm going to start dropping my voice to try to make it sexy because now's the part where I ask you for an honest rating and review. (laughs) As you know, I don't charge money for this show and I would be extremely grateful if you would help me to get the word out and increase awareness uh, by leaving me an honest rating and review over at iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, whatever platform you use to hear my voice. That is a very quick and simple task and it's a small ask. It's a small price to pay for the value that you get on this podcast, I believe, in my heart. I, not, not, every, not, no, not every episode's a home run. I'll give you that. Sometimes I phone them in because I need an episode. You got me. But at least some care has been taken and I do put some effort into this. So I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And email it to me. You know, Take a screenshot, send it to me at info at privatelenderpodcast.com. And look, if you're trying, if you're, you know, stumbled on this and you're trying to get your own stable of private lenders uh, for your own deals, and please, please share this with, uh, with anyone that you think may become a private lender for you. It's a valuable resource. It's free. It's a third party. It'll validate what you're doing. And I can help them stay safe. I'm not going to put them in an 85% LTV. So just know that. If you want to pull the hood over somebody's eyes, I know you're not going to send this to them. But if you're, if you're legit... And you do care, you share it with them. All right. Anyway, spread the words. Spread the words. Listen to me. All right. Look, I'm going to leave. Uh, I'm going to say adios. Y'all take care. Please wash your hands. And even though I hate it, I do wear the mask. It just seems like a decent thing to do, even though it's bullshit. Anyway, so I'm going to leave you with this. Besides self-awareness, I wish you all safe and prosperous. Private lending. And I'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Private Lender Podcast with your host, Keith Baker. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit privatelenderpodcast.com. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review, and we'll catch you next time.